Right. Well, we're here today with Mark Haldane of Zambezi Delta Safaris. Uh, most people think of safari operators as uh, providing opportunities for hunting, which is true. Uh, but Mark's Zambezi Delta Safaris has an enormous conservation effort uh, that is part of their hunting uh, concession as well. So I've asked Mark if he would talk to us about that conservation aspect of Zambezi Delta Safari. So thank you, Mark, for You're welcome, being here Mark. today. You're welcome. Well, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. Okay. We started in 1994. Okay. The Zambezi Delta of Mozambique had been absolutely devastated by the Civil War, and uh, there were pockets of game. It was an okay. absolutely spectacular area with wonderful habitat, but very little game. Okay. To give you an idea, um, an area, uh, the delta itself, probably around about one and a half million acres, had only 1,200 buffalo left in it. Wow. So uh, that's what we started with. We, we, in, in my block, 11, we had about 40 sable, five zebra, and little pockets of wildlife all over the place. So the first thing that uh, we realized we had to do was uh, um, start a little unit to look after them. Now, understandably, there was very little income at that, sta at that stage. Um, quotas were very small, so the offtake was very small. But fortunately, our other operations were able to subsidize it. And uh, we started our first anti-poaching unit. Okay. <clears throat> the game responded very well, and uh, we started to see a good increase, as well as little pockets of game that had been cut off out there slowly gravitated back towards uh, this ideal habitat and an area of protection. So let me ask a quick question. You mentioned you had how many sable then? We had 44 then. How many do you have now? 3,000. 3,000, okay. And, and, and we have, uh, we've reached capacity of our area for sable. Uh, we have uh, for several years now, and the sable have repopulated neighboring blocks and okay. around us. So, That's amazing. Um, so the anti-poaching was the primary part. Um, uh, we've grown that out today into uh, what we believe we've got a world-class operation now. Yes. We've got 22 full-time rangers. Um, we have a fast reaction motorcycle unit that can reach virtually any corner of our concession within an hour. Okay. Um, and we have the Dallas Safari Club helicopter patrol, wow. which is in the air for most days for an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we haven't stopped the poaching, but man, we've suppressed it down to 95% of what it was. So. Wow. So it made a huge difference there. And in terms of, we have this gin trap sitting in yeah. front of us. So this is one of the ones you would have collected? This is one that was collected in the field. Um, in the early days, we'd, we, we would collect several hundred mm -hmm. every year. And now, you know, maybe 20 or 30 a year is, is okay. what we're picking up. Now all on the fringes of our area, nothing in the core of the area. Now you have a lot of now community interaction as well for the conservation, the local people who would have been yeah, poaching. That's, that's uh, uh, correct. Um, I think the most important thing is that if we're going to have longevity mm. in our conservation efforts, we have to make the local population feel like they partners in, in, in the right. conservation of wildlife. Yes. So uh, just very briefly, um, the first thing we started doing was um, a community meat drop Right. Where we take uh, meat from the animals that are poached and, and uh, uh, poached, sorry, that are hunted, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we deliver that back to the the local community. Okay. And um, this year we did 31 metric tons. Oh my! So it equates to about 10 pounds of fresh meat per family per week during the hunting season. Wow! Which takes away the need totally for them to do any subsistence poaching. Right. Um, in addition to that, we've built a school, okay. uh, a clinic. Um, we have a mobile corn mill that goes from village to village. Oh my, okay. um, We have a community beekeeping project which is one of the more exciting. It will be self-sustainable pretty quickly. Okay. We're, we're trying to work up to a thousand hives. Right. And then we have an agricultural project where we, uh, we help them plow mm. and help them with fertilizer and seed and in return they agree not to do any slash and burn that in the forest. Fantastic. So. Uh, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. So, so you are putting back into the community what they need, and then they don't need to destroy wildlife to Th get what they need. That's correct, Mark. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for much keeping, appreciated. 